Seriously, they would know how to be serious yeah. if they're. Oh well, they do. I believe we're on right now. I believe oh. we really were serious. Oh, well, about hi that everybody. Time. We've been sitting here talking <laughs> oh. for a while. And we didn't get serious about it. Hey, I'm Larry and I'm Laban. Welcome to Cook and Cheat. And it's real good to see you. Talking about Laban, listen to this. This is from our friend Pat Rice. You remember Pat from the. Uh, newspaper in Lynchburg, Virginia, oh, came and interviewed. Yes, yes, yes. She wrote, Dear Laban, and I guess it's Laban since WRB, uh, R. WBRA That's gave station. me. Have a little problem with the car letters. <laughs> gave me a press release with that spelling, L A B A N. The editor, in name only here, wanted to argue the point with me. <laughs> yeah, my name is L A B A N, and it's biblical. It's from Genesis, and he was. Uh, Abraham's father-in-law, for those of you. Look in Genesis 30 and you'll my see. My name's Larry. It's from my daddy. Uh, <laughs> That's about as far as that goes. And uh, here well, is... Was that the end of the letter? Well, I didn't was want to write all this other letter. stuff. She was right, self-deprecating there. Phoebe Brighton from Nicholsville, Virginia, wrote in and said, uh, I purchased a Cook and Cheap cookbook a few years ago and just love it. Keep up the good work and don't worry. You're much neater than the frugal gourmet. <laughs> well, thanks, and we hope eventually Where's Nicholsville? to... Where's Nicholsville? I don't know. That be? Nicholsville. I'm going to have to look that up, I believe. Between a penny and a dime. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate it here. Probably. And uh, let's These see. These are real letters, too. Oh, I don't know. This... <laughs> Now, what you mean? Some of the letters we have aren't real. Is that what you're trying yes, to say? But the one we one we read last week from that woman, yeah, that Richmond woman was real. real. Oh, she By the way, we're really going to be flashing real. up her address at the end of the program for anybody like to yes. write to her. All right. And uh, or if you'd like to uh, write to us, uh, just send a you know if you have a comment about what that lady said about us, if you'd like to write her a letter, just send it to us and mark it to the crab and we will <laughs> and <laughs> forward, forward your letters. the mail to her. <laughs> All right, dear boys, I'm writing to you for some recipes. I watch your program every day that you're on the air. Why do you change your schedule so much and stop having repeat programs? You ought to be right to the program director <laughs> at this place, not to us. Also, why don't you tell the audiences something about yourselves? Are you married, have children, and what you do for a living? I know you couldn't live on what you probably make from your show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen, the program with the chicken livers, that really made me sick to put them in without washing them. Who wants to eat all that blood? <laughs> <laughs> do you know? Do you know too many people that wash the livers when they get them out of the little thing? Well, you, really, it's a good idea to if you've got the time. But, honey, if we wash the livers, that meant that the bloody water would go down into the uh, drain here, and our drain is not too good, and we'd probably know about it for a couple of years. So, <laughs> oh, so anyway, oh, I know. Well, thank you. Today, now I, wait a minute. Oh, that's not. Are it. you married? Do you have any children? And what do you do for a living? I I, I refuse to answer any of these questions on the air unless I get a prize. Oh, okay. what is this? The newlywed game? Well, I know it's my <laughs> personal question. <laughs> You'll just right have personal. to figure it out. But his alimony payments are real high. <laughs> Excuse me, I just got water all over the everything. Oh, uh, it made you nervous. I'm going to do a baked potato. <laughs> oh, good. That's really filling. hard to do. With a fancy oh. filling in it. And I'm going to do fried potatoes. Oh, that's real tough, too. Uh -huh. yeah. But you'd be surprised how many people would have trouble with them. This is a part of our continuing series on basic foods that you can... Do that in you your can home. do real fast. That everybody should be able to do, but nobody seems to know how to do or a lot of the time. Well, some people some don't. Some people don't. Oh, by the way, come over here, Laban. We have to show these people this gorgeous display. Which this has, is not a commercial, but this was an unsolicited this donation is, to our show. This is so nice. You know, a lot of people down in Richmond watch us. R Richmond, Virginia. Richmond, Virginia watch us. And all of a sudden, last week, you, you want to step back there a little bit so they can see it all. And all of a sudden, this, this past week, we received this unsolicited in the mail from the Sowers family, who still, who still operate uh, firsthand this fine company that makes all these wonderful uh, herbs and spices. Isn't well, that, that nice? Thank you, Sowers. That, uh, thank we you very much. It. All you people of Richmond are responsible for that. And they know that we never have what we need. So. Now we do. So there. Oh! I'm Who's sorry, gonna I got go? hung up on the thing. You want to go first? Well, uh, yes, I have such a hard one. Let me start out here. First, you have to melt some butter and fry some onions. Take it, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> she just got me out of the picture. I don't that's, know what they're doing. So that's uh, that. really and truly, that's all I'm doing. I've got a couple of tablespoons of 
margarine and I'm going to turn on my pan here and, and fry this nice little uh, pile of fried onions. I've got a, oh, I'm not going to fry all of them, but I've got about a medium sized onion here chopped up. All right. Well, now what I have done, let me, and what he has not done is, uh, oh, look at them. Well, I thought you were going to show them how to do that. How to do what? Bake the potatoes. No, I'm not going to show them how to bake the potatoes. What is there to do? You just wash them off and put a little margarine on the outside of them and stick a couple of holes oh. in the front of them. Well, why don't you put aluminum foil on them? Oh, because you don't have to. <laughs> you, that's exactly right. It's you true. don't have to. You and don't have if to. If you put aluminum foil on them, they, 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 they steam. steam. They don't really bake. They steam. So leave the foil off of them. But let me tell you something. This is kind of important no matter which way you do it. Whether you, whether you, whether you just put them in like this. Make sure you wash them off and take a little margarine and put all over the outside of them. But make sure you punch some holes in them because if you do not, they will explode mm -hmm. in your oven. It's truly true. It's true. It really is. And what I did is I made the holes along the line of where I'm going to be cutting. The line of demarcation. The, <laughs> that's right. Because in a couple of minutes, I don't know why I cut that off. I need to cut it back off. Because in a couple of minutes, we're going to we're going to cut that thing. Well, in fact, right now, I'm going to cut it open. I need a knife. Now, what we'll do is take these potatoes. Oh, they're done. Thank heavens. This ought to be a lot of fun. Me with my, my tender little fingers. I hope I'm doing this yeah, right. Yeah, you're doing it right. Here, use a, use a pothole. Put them in a potholder and squeeze them. Put them in a potholder yeah. and squeeze them. Use that big one right over there. Well, now all I'm going to do now is no, just no, get no, in. Let me, what? Here, hand me one. Put it in here. Let me show you the easy way to do this. Hot potato. All right, look. <laughs> you put it in your potholder like this, and you just scrunch it in to the middle. And then when you let go of it, there you go. Oh, how embarrassing the bottom flew out of it. Why did it do that? I don't, they may not be quite as done as we thought they were. Well, they ought to be. They've been, well, doing, do a, been going do that for two or three days. days. Yeah. Well, there you go. Th that's good enough. That's I, good I enough. believe that's the greatest play. Yeah. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take that pulp and we're going to scoop it out with a spoon. I can tell this is going to be the biggest mess I've ever gotten into on this program. Oh, it couldn't be that bad. <laughs> Take a spoon and get that pulp out of there. Get the pulp out of it. Well, it seems to be done. We're scooping that out. Now, how's come this, this stuff is so flaccid? I don't know. I don't get it. Well, Laban, this thing is totally falling to pieces. This oh, is just utterly... Well, maybe you don't need to take out quite as much just as just an utter leave, leave, some, leave some of that in there. Well, that's all loose, so no need oh. to leave that in there. Now, well, there's enough there to form just mm -hmm. a basic... Uh, Hello, boys and girls. I'm Mr. Potato. All right. There you go. Now, same thing on the other one. Now, you don't need to go all the way to the edge. Oh, Leave yourself goodness. just a little bit. We well, don't want to go all the way don't on this Don't go side. all the way to the edge. I believe I'm already there. Oh, well, that, well, that would same thing happen to it. Whole side of it split out. Maybe we should have wrapped it in foil, someone no, said. No, no. No, no, no. It has nothing to do with it. Well, Johnson, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go on with this. Well, I don't sure. care. You can put it back together. there's nothing left of it, by the time I get finished with it, I'm going to do the doggone thing. There it is. Isn't it pretty? Lovely. <laughs> Now what we're going to do is squish that back together, make it look like it didn't fall apart, so that all your neighbors won't harass you when and you make serve fun this of stuff. You. And make fun of you. Now we're going to take those and we're going to put them back in the oven so that they will harden just a little bit. <sighs> okay. Well, and I'm frying my onions while you're going to do that, that while we play with the rest of this stuff that we have just taken out. Now at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to add several things to this and we're going to mix it up real nice. Keep those in there while you're doing this so that they'll sort of firm up a little bit. I don't understand. I've never had that problem before. I know. Potatoes weren't right. Something wasn't right about them. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to take this uh, pulp and we're going to take some margarine and throw in there. Some margarine. Just 
play it by ear while this stuff is good and steamy hot. Take a little of that and put it in there. Ooh, there was an eyeball in my potato. <laughs> and cut those up a little bit so they won't fly out while you're doing them. And put your eye out. Now, one egg per potato. So we got two of them in there. So we're going to put two of them in there. One egg per potato. And a little bit of milk or cream. Just a tiny little bit. And I'm not going to put that in just yet because I want to take this stuff and... Oh. It would be helpful if I had a smaller bowl. There's nothing going right about this recipe. I'm not happy with this at all. i tell you what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going to mash it by hand to start out with. That'll do. To start out with. Because the bowl's a little big. We don't seem to have a mixing bowl here. That's something we need to put on our list of flea market items, Johnson. Uh-huh. You know, we don't buy any of our equipment in a regular store when you can get it much cheaper at a flea market. Now, by the way, while we're messing with this stuff, this would be a good point to make a point. Do you know there are two ways to do mashed potatoes? You can just do mashed potatoes where you use the potatoes and the juice of the potatoes right. poured into it. Mm -hmm. And then there are creamed potatoes That's right. where you take the potatoes and put them in and you pour milk or cream into it. And now, it they don't know creamier. what the juice of the potato means. What do you mean? The stuff that you've uh, boiled it in. Oh, the potato water. Oh, okay. Yeah, the potato water. Now, this time we're making a creamed type of potato and you don't want a lot of it. You don't need an awful lot of it. Now we'll take this and mix up one. It has to get nice and creamy. That ought to be real pretty. It's mixing up real nice now. Mm -hmm. Doing real good. And I don't like it much thinner than that. No, I think that's just fine. That ought to be a good consistency. How much milk and cre or cream it you put into it depends very much on how much margarine you put into it because it sort of thins it down mm -hmm. a little bit. So now there you have the basic filling that's going right. to go back into this thing. But I'm going to let my potatoes in there just a little bit. In the meantime, I have taken some fine Valleydale uh, bacon and fried it so that it is real crisp. And I have crumbled this stuff up, and we're going to have real bits of bacon in this, along with sour cream. Mm -hmm. And if you like me, you hate those, those fake bacon things. Mm -hmm. We use the real stuff on this show. And we'll be doing that in a little bit. Right now, we're just going to let these things bake okay. in here a little bit so that they firm up a little. Well, while, while all that's going <laughs> they on, They look let me like they firmed up and exploded. What? Let me do a couple of things over here. I've got three... Uh, boiling potatoes. Now that's important. Don't get the big lovely baking potatoes like Blyhead. Get the red skin or a white skin round potato that looks like a little cannonball and you'll see it says for boiling because it's a waxy potato and I boiled them uh, earlier today and let them chill and now you they're real firm. They have a nice consistency. They're uh, peeled and the eyes cut out of them where they've been left in and so they're all together and they'll hold their shape. Now I've added a little more margarine to my frying pan where I've got my onions and now I'm going to throw these three potatoes cooked, already cooked now, not raw, they're already cooked. Are they already cooked? They're, uh, yeah, Larry, as a matter of fact, they're already cooked. <laughs> and I'm going to stir them around in here. I've got the heat turned up a little bit more, and I'll put a little salt on them. Whoops! You know what I need to do with this mess <laughs> because I'm waiting? Oh, you what? did put a little on there, Just didn't you? Just a little bit too much. Tad bit much there, Johnson, and not to kill a horse. Some, some pepper. 
You know, I ought to take this stuff and put it on the stove to keep it hot while we're standing around waiting. Well, that might not be a bad idea. You might keep that down, put that down as a little hint. If you're going to stuff your potatoes at the last minute, I mean, if you're going to stuff them <laughs> and let them lay around for a while, you'd be better off to take the dog on pulp that you just made up, which, by the way, I just put a little salt and pepper in, too, because it tasted right bland, I thought. What I'm going to do is take some of these and put them in a pan on top of the stove, keep that stuff hot until these things come out of the oven because we're working kind of differently on TV than we do in the kitchen, all right? We're not right. going right to the table. We're gonna fill 15 minutes worth of time first. Okay. Well, I ask, how much time? Ah! Just joking. Oh, okay. I like to see you get all upset. Well, I'm certainly not gonna I'm gonna take that and put it in there so it'll stay warm. Now, my potatoes and onions are all mixed up and look nice in here, and I'm gonna add They're some all paprika. Mixed up. Now this is uh, hot paprika, and I don't know how much I'm putting in here, probably a couple of teaspoons. I hope I don't burn little, this stuff. <laughs> you know, paprika is made from peppers, peppers, and that will give your potatoes a little color and a nice little flavor. Mm, mm, mm. Boy, this is really coming along, Larry. Look at this. And you just want them to Ooh, kind of beautiful. spread out here a little bit and let them fry on the bottom, and then we're going to turn them over while we're waiting. What kind of suggestion could you give to some of my favorite restaurants around town that try to serve these things on Sunday morning, but when you get them, they're like rubber well, and tasteless? I would say, first of all, use real potatoes. Don't use the frozen ones unless you're willing to cook them a little bit longer. What they do is they get a commercially formed cake and just brown it on both sides without really getting it browned all the way through like some people like it. I'm like you, I, I prefer to have something that is a little, has a little crunch through it. And yep. uh, that's what you need to do. And I'm gonna just turn them over now a little bit. And we're gonna continue to let, you could serve them like this, but I like them to, get, to have a little bit of crust to them. So. There's so much pepper flying around here right now. Mm-hmm. Well, let's look at these recipes, Lair, while we're... While we're waiting for our yeah. skins to toughen. <laughs> the baked stuffed potato. Now, you take uh, one baking potato per person, nice big one, and bake it uncovered, and nothing on the outside of it except its real honest goodness skin, which you have to, which you have to take and, and wash real good and put a little margarine all around it. And uh, a little milk or cream for the, now what we're gonna give you right now, this is, this is once you've baked it, then you take that out, put in a little milk or cream, one egg per potato, chopped bacon, sour cream, or you can even take some uh, cheese and grate on top of it, put it back in the oven, and uh, broil it, put it under the broiler. Mm -hmm. And that would be real nice too. If you don't want to use the sour cream to chop bacon. And for your fried potatoes, you need boiling potatoes, onions, margarine, salt, pepper, and paprika. How easy could it be? Easiest dish in the world to do. And incidentally, another little uh, tip, if you're frying bacon and you're not afraid of the consequences of clogged arteries, you could uh, fry the potatoes in the bacon drippings. They're awfully tasty that way. And many people can have it that way. All right, now what I'm doing is, is I'm keeping this stuff hot on top of this. I gotta be careful, I don't wanna. Oh, did you see what I just did? Oh, sure I can't help you. it. It's my fingers that prepared it and my fingers that are touching. I'm gonna cut that off. I don't want those to go too far. Now, we're gonna take these out of the oven. They've been in there sort of crispening up. I don't know really how long would be an ideal time to crispen them. Oh, there are. They're starting to get They've firm. Dried out. Yeah, yeah, they're trying to start to dry out and get a little bit firm, even though they do look like two old loafers. Just sort of like uh, Rex. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't gonna get me to touch that one. All right. Our friend, the manager, <laughs> dried up and starting to get firm. <laughs> or in, no. Yeah, I heard him talking I, to you the other day. I know he's getting firm. I see. We're putting that back in there. Isn't that pretty? That's just full of loveliness. Ooh, take, that is, that's a wonderful shot, too. Take that one and move it over a little. Now we're going to open this one up. Open house at the old potato. 
try and do it a little more neatly than I'm doing it, although I have plenty of time. I don't know why I'm hurrying. Why does that camera shot look so good? Is that a new camera? Hmm. No, they, they kicked it a while ago. Oh. <laughs> and it, it's been looking good ever since. And there you go. Now, aren't those pretty? Aren't those lovely? Of course, Beautiful. Of course, they're so full, we'll never get them out of there. Now, what you want to do at this point, should have put foil over it. <laughs> they're still yelling about that foil. Now, at this point, you may want to take a little, take a little sour cream and put on top of it. It's been sitting underneath the lights all afternoon. It's real runny. Isn't that real attractive, boys and girls? And some real honest to goodness bacon. I can't understand why anybody would ever go for those little bits of fake stuff when it only takes a couple of minutes to do the real thing and it's so much tastier. Oh, Sprinkle I wish I brought some of my beautiful chives out of the yard. Oh, you know that'd be pretty on there. And I'm gonna set these back in the oven just for a couple of minutes so they don't get cold, all right? Look, Claire, these beautiful golden mm. crust on these potatoes just couldn't be better. And they'll be ready to go in just a few minutes. They are gorgeous. I just, just wonder. You know, we'll throw that over on the table. You just wonder what? I wonder if Miss Witch has got anything for us today. Well, I don't know. Someone Where is she? Let's me watch she's over coming this way straight and, in. Uh, and, although I oh, don't really. Oh, <laughs> she has come in on a different pattern this uh -huh. week. <laughs> she's got that helicopter lesson she's been taking. She can go up and down now uh -huh. instead of swooping in this way. <laughs> It's incredible. And she's doing it on your head. Well, here, I'll, I'll let you read it. Dear Laban and Larry, we've seen you do brunch shows, but how do you do bacon and eggs? We want to impress these two neat guys in the apartment downstairs, but we're all afraid we'll screw up the bacon complicated egg. stuff like Eggs Benedict, Wanda and Ramona. Egg, bacon and eggs and eggs benedict? No, they don't want to do eggs benedict. They're afraid. They just want some simple bacon and eggs. Oh, 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 oh. You mean they can't fry bacon and eggs? Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, you ask for it, and next week, well, let me ask bacon you this. and eggs. Uh, can, does it take 30 minutes to do bacon and eggs? I think the way <laughs> you're going to it will. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already worried about it. Well, okay. We'll try Whoops. to do bacon oh, and eggs. Oh, no, I'm almost burning me. <laughs> <laughs> it's burned them while you're <laughs> standing there. I can't believe it. That's what happens on television, see? Oh, you did. <laughs> <laughs> they were so pretty up until gone. that point. I just can't believe it. Well, well, I guess I can believe it. I'm going to have to serve them before you get over here. Oh. Uh, that's fine. Go on ahead. I'm, I've got to get the proper utensils for getting these huge potatoes out of here. And as soon as Johnson gets finished... <laughs> what are you going to use, like forceps or something? <laughs> no, 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 but I, I do need... They are right large, these mm -hmm. potatoes. Oh, boy. I don't think we're ever going to get there. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm so excited. I know you are. I'm so excited. excited. Oh, now look, that you know that's beautiful. That's a picture of loveliness. It is. And yeah, this one looks like it exploded. And this one's a picture of that. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, you splat that down on someone's plate, and they're going to be impressed. Well, if you're, if you're careful about hollowing out the shells, I guess. And I have to take the blame for that. I, I lose did, your I, think, I don't think I did a very good job of hollowing out the shells. Maybe what you should have used the melon ball or something. You think so instead or, of no, no, it in foil. no, not in foil. All right, let me, let's well, see. Hey, here. it's all right, it's still good. <laughs> it looks terrible. And believe me, you won't impress anybody doing it like that. Mm -mm -mm. But it is good. Mm. Excellent. Well, let me try your potatoes. You know, I have never had a meal of potatoes and potatoes before. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about your starchy meal. Mmm, heavenly. I wish we had mm. some ketchup. Boy, wouldn't some ketchup be good on those mm. fried potatoes? Those fried potatoes, despite the fact they're a little bit uh, brown on the edges, are still just excellent. They really are. If you could get this for breakfast in the morning, mm -hmm. go out every morning. This is fabulous. Absolutely. But you don't have to. You can do it yourself. Well, we've had a real good time today, and we'll be back next we have? week. Oh, yeah. At the same time and place. Oh, yeah. To do bacon and eggs. I'll do the bacon, bacon and Larry and will do the eggs. For 30 minutes? Mm hmm. You'll love it. See you then.
If you're a fan of Cookin' Cheap and would like copies of the recipes, make a $60 pledge of support to Blue Ridge PBS, and we'll say thank you with the new Cookin' Cheap cookbook. This hardcover three-ring binder is chocked full of over 930 recipes that were presented on the show by Laban and Larry. In addition, you'll also receive instructions on how to download a digital copy of the cookbook to use on your favorite device. Pledge for your cookbook now at BlueRidgePBS.org or by calling 866-624-8366. Thank you.